Hey everybody, so welcome to part two of the video series on no code taxonomy to ontology. Now we don't need to necessarily use those words. We are going to be talking about knowledge representation. In our first video, link up here, also down below. Please make sure you watch that video first because it goes through how to create the kit as well as the taxonomy that we're going to be using today. Now taxonomies are hierarchical. They are bucketing like systems, right? They also are what you are seeing in your pizza parlor menu. Now, what if you needed to take that menu and be able to assemble different kinds of specialty pizza? That is your task for today. Now, if you decided to go with a ice cream based taxonomy, what about some, you know, specialty ice cream sundaes? Try to recreate it doing this method. You can make it really fun. And also, since we're on the topic of food, a great way to end these exercises is to actually make what you're talking about. All right, so with all the groundwork out of the way, let's go get started. Starting with our ingredients from the last episode, we are going to be looking at why do people come to our pizza parlor? Why do people come to ours over somebody else's? And in this case, it's specialty pizza. And have some fun with this. I came up with my own specialty pizzas for this video, but please have some fun with this. Experiment, come up with some really fun ones to do while you're doing this exercise. Now in this video, I'm only going to go over two of these pizza types, but please go ahead and try some of the other ones I have listed here, or feel free to experiment and do your own. Choose your own adventure time. Okay, so this is where you wanna ask everyone to organize and assemble these pizzas and do this organically. People do tend to fall into the forest or trees category of organizing this way. Trees is when you look at an individual pizza and you build out all of the relationships and all of the ingredients for that one pizza. Children usually do start with that approach. Interestingly enough, adults usually start with the forest approach. And we are gonna start there in this exercise because I think it's a great way to think through which organizational method makes the most sense for your use case. The forest is looking at the entire segment of specialty pizzas and understanding how you would make all of them all at once. Starting out, you will wanna ask yourself, how would I make a pizza, what do I need to start with? And that is where you're going to start to build out how things are related to other things. So how big is this pizza? How is that size related to specialty pizzas? Also keep in mind, you want to make sure you ask the question, are all specialty pizzas going to be size large? If they are, you can make one relationship. If they are not all going to be large size pizzas, you need to make relationships for each one of those. And a relationship is represented with a card and a red line. I'm using a tabletop to do this, but you can certainly use sticky notes or tape to put this up on a wall as well to make it a little easier to see how these connections are made. So let's continue to build out our pizzas. And as you go, fill out the different relationships between the different components of the pizzas. It might be helpful to lay out all of the cards at once and then write out the relationships and connect them with the red string. Now you'll notice it's gonna get a little dicey here because with the forest approach, we are looking at all the different doughs all at once. And then we're going to look at all of the different sauces for these pizzas all at once. And when we get into ingredients, it gets really, really complicated. So that is why at the end of this piece, we're going to stop and reflect on the method, either forest or trees that we have selected. Now, that doesn't mean that the forest approach is not a valid approach. It's absolutely a valid approach just maybe not for this use case because as you can see it looks like we're making spaghetti rather than pizza at this point so let's reflect here are some discussion points 
If I was more interested in understanding which ingredients I may have forgotten during our first video when we listed out all of the ingredients we wanted to include, the forest approach would actually do a really good job in identifying if I had missed anything. And the tree method is maybe better if I am thinking of making myself or a family member a individual pizza because I'm really only interested in that one instance, that one pizza that I really want to make well. So there are discussion points that you should be thinking through at this stage as to which method makes the most sense for whatever your use case, whether it's pizza or designing an interface for your end customers or a product. So let's explore that. Let's go and dig into making one individual pizza. And so now we're going to choose which pizza we want to start with. In this case, big cheese. Then we're going to look at what size is this specific pizza. We already have a relationship from before. So let's go ahead and connect that this specialty pizza, big cheese, is a large pizza. And let's continue to build out our pizza. So the big cheese pizza has a regular crust, so we can connect that with has dough regular. Now we're going to go through the sauces and we're going to say that it has a garlic white sauce. We're going to connect that with has sauce. Now we're going through toppings. So this is one all about the cheese. So hold up, novelty. Now that's interesting. Before when we were creating these buckets of things in our original video, I didn't know what cheese sticks was used for. But here we can see that this is actually a type of topping for a specialty pizza. Eureka! Now we can go back and refine not only the model we're creating now, but the model that we had originally created, adding refinement. All right, now we have our big cheese pizza and it is all done. Make sure as you make decisions about ingredients and relationships and organization throughout, you ask questions, understanding people's decision process and how you end up with one decision is incredibly important. So now let's go on to pizza number two. We will skip through a little bit quicker for this one, but this time we're going to be making a pizza with someone special in mind. Someone that either has food pickiness or food preferences, or maybe even perhaps an allergy. Take this opportunity to discuss those relationships among the two pizzas that you've created where they're unique relationships or where they're uniform relationships. If you had a pizza parlor and you had very unique pizzas every time you made one, how difficult would it be to recreate those pizzas? How much time would it take to recreate those pizzas if everything was unique? Or is that unique type of pizza, that one pizza that's so special, everybody comes to your pizza place? Those are the types of questions you really want to explore at this stage. Now is the time to connect those ingredients to that special someone who may not be able to eat lactose. How would you determine these ingredients have lactose in them? That's a good discussion point. What is the severity if you missed an ingredient with lactose in it? What is the severity of people coming in and complaining about this? How many people could perhaps have this issue? All of those are great discussion points for why you might need types of relationships, not just to build out the pizza or the product, but also how to determine things about that pizza, keeping in mind, understanding how deep you can go with your understanding of these ingredients and how to tie them together in unique ways so that you can do things that are fun, like create a brand new dessert pizza or things that are more serious. Maybe there was a shortage or a problem with tomatoes in your shipment and you really need to understand where those problems reside. 
all of this is a great way to get people engaged and thinking about not just how do you define and organize things, but what you can do with that information once you have it and once you start to organize it in a more unique graph-like way. All right, now our cheeseburger pizza is complete. We know which ingredients not to include for Uncle Al, who is lactose intolerant, so we can move on to the wrap up. All right, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope that you learned along the way with me as we developed this ontology knowledge organizational system and also unlike the first video if you are actually interested in seeing how this looks within the code i do have the ontology linked down below you can also access this on the web because this is the protege pizza ontology and if you are interested in seeing perhaps a third step to this where we maybe populate with very specific kinds of brands and what's called instance level information, let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to do another version of this. And leave in comments below, what kind of pizza are you making with this exercise? Because I really love to hear how people are using this. And so with that, I really do hope that this is bringing you and your families together. It's maybe bringing your team closer to the work that you are doing and thinking through the type of organization that you can use at your own institution. And with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.